presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox We are San Diego. Struck him out. There's double figures. Number 10. Struck him out. Andrew Kastner, a one-hit shutout. How does that feel? <laughs> no good deed goes unpunished. Andrew Kastner with a pie in the Gatorade to celebrate a magnificent performance last night. Can the Padres keep this man, the MVP of the last two years, American League, in check? He's off to a slow start. And how about Everett Cabrera at the top of the Padres lineup? He's in a four-game hitting streak, batting 471. He's the energizer for the San Diego Padres. As we welcome you to Petco Park, second game of this three-game series, the Padres entertaining the Detroit Tigers. And the Padre offense, we're going to give them some love tonight. How about last evening? They deserve a lot of love, and hopefully it can carry over to tonight against Justin Verlander because last night they had some great approaches against Rick Porcello. They had some great battles as well, and when you look at last night, the six runs scored, that gives the pitchers a big old smile on their face. Double digits and hits, 13 hits, five extra base hits. That's what the Padres need. But Chase Headley broke out of it. He got a bad slider out of the hand of Porcello and sent it a long way for the three-run shot. Chase Headley needed that. The Padres needed that. But they've got their work cut out for them tonight against Justin Verlander. If they can keep the same approach, use the whole field, take your chances against the good old right-hander from Detroit. Well, you got to have someone in that lineup that that posting pitcher regards seriously. And if Headley hits like that, he's the man. And hopefully Carlos Quinton will be back soon. But they've got to beat the right-hander Justin Verlander, a Cy Young winner and a most valuable player in the same year. Five straight seasons, 200-plus Ks. Seven straight seasons, 200-plus innings pitched. He can throw the fastball anywhere from 90 to 100. Four pitches, first in wins, first in strikeouts since 2006. What else can you say? And you know what? He was 13 and 12 last year with the ERA as well in the threes. And that was a down year for Justin Verlander. Are you kidding me? It's going to be a challenge for these hitters tonight because he's the type of pitcher that can turn it on. He's been so consistent since at the big league level. It's going to be a challenge tonight for the Padres, but it can be done. They can beat him. It's our first Saturday night baseball night in San Diego. Can the Tigers take on Justin Verlander and continue this modest winning streak? Should be a good one. We're pleased you're with us. Opening lineups coming up.
Justin Verlander on the mound for the Tigers. He's only pitched one other time here at Petco Park. That was back in 2008. In fact, only four Padres have ever hit against him. Chase Headley, Rene Rivera, Xavier Nady, and Seth Smith. But they say they are ready for the challenge. The fact that he's throwing a couple of no-hitters, uh, and he's had a Cy Young. And, but, you know, it's exciting for me because I've never faced him before. And I kind of grew up watching him and Beckett and, you know, Burnett, obviously, with the with the Marlins and Josh Johnson and all these guys that I grew up and I kind of like facing them because, you know, I get to say, hey, I, I faced this guy, you know, uh, so, you know, it's going to be exciting. Kind of have a good at bat. He, he throws three pitches whenever and kind of wherever he wants to and um, he throws hard on top of that. So it's it's a battle, but it's it, they're fun. I enjoy uh, facing him, not not because of any success or, or because it's easy by any means, but just the, the challenge and, and um, you know, the, the opportunity. And that's your Geico quote of the day. Speaking of Seth Smith, he's the only one that's had any success against him. He's had a home run, six walks, and seven strikeouts. He goes, if that's what you call success. So Verlander on the mound, also on the mound for the Padres, Ian Kennedy. First pitch is coming up next on Fox Sports San Diego. Petco Park on a beautiful Saturday night. Our first edition of Baseball Night in San Diego. Every Saturday night home game, there'll be a special celebration, including a giveaway. And tonight, the long sleeve t shirts will be treasured by the fans. Looks like we're going to have around 40,000. It's also girls softball night, so we'll have a lot of young baseball fans who enjoy the game of softball. Let's look at the lineup Detroit Tiger lineup. Rajay Davis, who got the only hit off Andrew Kashner, not well hit, but well directed last night. Then Ian Kinsler. Torrey Hunter back in the lineup. He's had a bruised knee. Miguel Cabrera, another home run threat in the cleanup spot, although he's off to a slow start, only one home run so far. Austin Jackson hits fifth. Nick Castellanos, uh, just a 22 year old. They really like the prospect, who's at third base. Alex Avila behind the plate. Alex Gonzalez at shortstop. And Verlander, who's never had a base hit in his major league career. Bats nine. And veteran right hander Ian Kennedy on the hill for the Padres. And the scouting report looks something like this the curveball, four strikes. If he is on with that in the changeup, I think he could give these Detroit Tiger fitters, fitters, hitters, fits. 
miss down and then go up by design. We've documented that the last couple starts ago. If he's up in the zone early, he could get hurt. Down by the knees and then up by the letters for the strikeout. And a check down mark of the Padres defense brought to you by a Rumco mortgage. Seth Smith in left, Will Venable in center, and Kristen Orphy in right. Headley and Cabrera on the left side, Jerko and Alonso at second and first, and Yasmani Grandal behind the plate for Ian Kennedy. Set to go. Rajay Davis, five steals already, and here's the first pitch of the game. Just misses to Davis. Had a couple of steals last night. A veteran with the uh, average. No plus plus speed. Two and oh Kennedy can ill afford to give uh, Davis a free ticket at that top of the lineup. Stole second and third last night. There's a strike called by Seth Buckmeister with Muchlinski, Winters, and Fletcher calling the bases. Line to right field, base hit. Denorfia will play it in. Davis with a solid single. Brings up second baseman Ian Kinsler, acquired from the Texas Rangers for Prince Fielder. Oh, a different look for these Detroit Tiger hitters after seeing Andrew Kastner last night. See how that ball leaks? Yes, Monte Grandal wanted that down and away, and Ian Kennedy is going to have to stay out of the heart of the plate. That ball leaked back over, but Rajay Davis did a nice job of just going with that pitch, not over swinging it at all. Now let's see if Brad Osmus put something on here to get some runner running in motion here early on. After he singled the only Tiger hit in the sixth inning off Andrew Kastner, he stole second and third. And with runners in first and third, the one serious threat for Detroit, Cabrera bounced into a double play. And that was it for Detroit. Now the weather, San Diego. Chamber of Commerce stuff, 64 degrees, mild breeze out of the northwest. A sweater night here in San Diego. Yeah, another lousy day in San Diego. Somebody's got to live here. <laughs> Looks like the wind blowing across from left field foul pole to the right field foul pole as it does so often. Kinsler, a tough all around out. And he drives that one to left center field. A long run for Smith. He can't get there. Neither can Venable. Off the wall it goes. And Davis with his speed sprinting around third. And he will score on a double by Kinsler. Now the Tigers had a long night to try to recover the nightmare performance against Andrew Kastner. And they come out a bit angry. A line single and a line double. And the first two men produce a run, something they could not do last night. Well, like any pitcher, you try to find that groove early. We talked about the pitch to Rajay Davis, and that one leaks right down the center of the plate. And Ian Kinsler is all over it. And with the speed of Rajay Davis, no use stopping him. Nobody out. Tigers are on the board. So two pitches over the heart of the plate from Ian Kennedy. You heard the voices in the background. A lot of Detroit Tiger fans have joined us at Petco tonight. We expect a lot more tomorrow when Max Scherzer, the reigning Cy Young winner, will be on the mound. Here's Torrey Hunter, not in the lineup last night. He's missed a couple of games, but he brings that big bat that has uh, produced over 300 career home runs into the lineup tonight. What a great career for Torrey Hunter out with that left knee bruise. Around the hands with a changeup. That's a darn good changeup from E. Kenny, and that's one of the big keys, right? Talked about the curveball and the off speed pitch changeup. Even righty on righty. Some pretty good career numbers right there, Dick. You're talking about the 300 plus home runs. How about over hey. 1,200 runs yeah. batted in? One, two, three, four. Hopefully it stays like that for the rest of the series. No out, and Kinsler with an RBI double perched at second. Hunter. 37 years of age now out of Pine Bluff, Arkansas. He's been at several major league stops and a star everywhere he's played. Slap foul. Broke in with the Minnesota Twins 
in 1997. As a youngster. 11 years with Minnesota. Then to. The Halos in Anaheim. For five years and then at Detroit last year. Hit 304. With 17 homers. Rawlings Gold Glove Award winner as well. You know his defense is right up there with one of the best as well. Kennedy gets his first strikeout. Using the changeup, he threw more changeups than any major league pitcher a year ago. Let's take a look at the keys of the game brought to you by your Honda dealers of San Diego County. Get a lead, get to the pen early. Padres are going to have to do some work being down one nothing up to this point. Well, you retire. Tory Hunter on strikes, and then you have the pleasure of facing this man. Not a lot of let up, huh? <laughs> Most valuable player in the American League each of the last two years. And you just go on and on about Miguel Cabrera, and that's that swing that delivers a lot of power to right center field. Well, what Miguel Cabrera has been doing lately, we saw it last night. Last night, I think it was only eight pitches that he saw. And the balls he put in play, the shortstop side, third base side of second base. That's not Miguel Cabrera. His strength is like you said, Dick, center field and right center field. You can see him trying to maybe go that way, just working underneath that one a little bit. So far, Cabrera in eight games, only one home run. And in the last five, he's three for 20. So the Padres have caught him in a rare modest slump. There's the shot to right center field. Long run for Venable and he gets there at the edge of the track tagging and moving to third is Kinsler. He'll turn and hold as the relay comes in. Just missed that one that might have been out in some ballparks. I kept him in the ball yard and it's a big second out. Big key for this series as well mentioning keeping him off the bases. He wanted it inside that ball a little bit inside gets the hands through but just goes to show you the strength of Cabrera getting to that baseball on the inside part of the plate. Just got it in a little bit down towards that label of the bat, missing the sweet spot. Love the Phantom Cam. Two outs to center fielder Austin Jackson. And this would be for Kennedy. And a minor but uh, somewhat critical spot early in the game. A run is in and to hold the Tigers after a single double to just one tally. That would be huge. Totally agree. Jackson, 323. Another in the Detroit lineup, you have to give full respect. They swing the bat. And that one driven to right field, and DeNorfia on his horse and chases it down. A couple of good plays in the outfield by Venable and DeNorfia denying the Tigers more. They take a 1 0 lead as Cabrera, DeNorfia, and Smith will come to bat for the Padres. But the Padres come up in the first inning and 
The San Diego lineup is brought to you by Toyota. Here's how Bud Black has his men hitting. Almost the same lineup as last night with the exception of the catcher. Cabrera, Denorfia, Smith, the first three. Jerko in the cleanup spot. Chase Headley with three RBIs last night, a double and a two-run homer. DeAndre Alonso at first, then Yasmani Grandal gets the start behind the plate. Will Venable dropped down to the eighth spot, and Ian Kennedy hitting ninth. Right-hander Justin Verlander, game two, the Tigers Padres, and here's what we got on the Cy Young Award winner. Take his fastball away. Get to his secondary pitches. You might have one, maybe two pitches in that bat to try to take advantage of Verlander. Four-pitch pitcher, 31-year-old right-hander. He's got 13 pages, Dick, in the media guide. You think he's had a good career? That's right. It's a, it's a book on Verlander alone. 13. And on one of those pages, uh, a note that he played his college ball at Old Dominion. In Virginia, he's a native of that state. High school in Richmond. Everett Cabrera, eight for 17 in the last four games. And he works the count to his favor early. As we mentioned in the pregame show, the fact that Cabrera, unlike uh, his earlier years, when he gets two strikes, he chokes up in the handle, tries to punch the ball, uses left field when he's batting left-handed, takes that one outside, three and zero. Oh. Pretty mechanically sound for Justin Verlander. See the glove tucked in front, getting out the high backside. That's a big key for a pitcher who can throw hard. That back foot coming up and around. Good follow through from Verlander. Well, the diehard Padre fans that would want to go back uh, 10 years, they shudder when they think about that draft. He was picked in the first round, the second player selected. The Padres had the first pick and went with Matt Bush. Two and one. Foul back. And immediately Verlander, two years later, was the American League Rookie of the Year. There is the 0 4 draft. Matt Bush, a local, taken by the Padres. Troubled life for Bush. Then Verlander. Well, look at Philip Umber through yeah. the perfect game for the Chicago White Sox a few years back. And against the Mariners, yeah. Jeff Neiman with the Rays. Full count. Cabrera waits. And he pulls this ball to the first baseman Cabrera. Miguel Cabrera at the first base spot tonight. Takes care of his namesake. And that takes us to the defense for the Detroit Tigers. In the outfield for Detroit. Davis Jackson in center. Hunter will patrol right field. Castellanos. The 22 year old rookie at third with Gonzalez and Kinsler up the middle. And Miguel Cabrera moves across the diamond from third to first. Avila or Avila behind the plate. The Detroit announcers, it's Avila. Those here in Southern California would say Avila. Avila. That's right. The Norfia first ball hunting sends that one for a souvenir as the crowd continues to file in. The beautiful Petco. We're fortunate there's just enough cloud layer that we don't have those disturbing shadows that's oftentimes uh, carved their way between the pitcher and hitter and make it mighty tough on the batsman. There's that curveball from Justin Verlander. And Dick, as we take a look at this beautiful shot, you're absolutely right. Very comfortable setting here at Petco Park for everybody, as you mentioned. The pitcher, the hitter, get a good look. At the offerings from Justin Verlander. The third baseman Castellanos backed up about six seven steps and when Denorfia saw that he scored as if he might try to drop a bunt. That was frozen by the breaking pitch and it's one and two. For Verlander. This is his third game. He's uh, his teammates have been guilty of. No support at all. He's pitched 14 innings, allowed only four runs, and his record is 0-1. You know there is so much to talk about Justin Verlander, and one thing that he can do so well, he can change gears. He can start a game 92, 93, with the velocity on the fastball, and then he can just toy with you, go the second inning, third inning. Okay, maybe he's got a lead. Maybe he doesn't have his back up against the wall, but come crunch time. He could turn it up a notch and hit 96 97 when needed. That's what makes him so special. And hitters 
praise him in that it's tough to pick up the pitch that he his delivery for all of his repertoire is identical. He doesn't tip uh, by arm angle. Mm -hmm. Any pitches you're going to see it all from right there and then Arthur reads it well and lines a single in the left field. Davis plays it on a hop and Denorfia has the first hit for the Padres. Chris did a nice job of fighting off that fastball on the inside part of the plate out of the hand of Justin Verlander. He got it elevated. Remember, as I mentioned just a bit ago, you might get one or two pitches to hit. This is a darn good pitch. Boy, let him get his hands through. Get those hands through. And even though because it's elevated, look at contact about mid thigh high. That's high enough to send it over the infielders into left center field for the base hit. Left fielder Seth Smith has faced Verlander as a member of the Oakland A's. He was two for nine and a home run. Nice block by Abla. Change up in the dirt. Well, we have some 3,000 softball girls here and their coaches cheer on the Padres tonight on baseball night in San Diego. Oh, and the anthem sung by David Mosby. That baritone voice, has mm -hmm. he ever got great pipes? He's the lead singer with Little Kings. Everything smooth so far on How many O's? Saturday night. That's about five O's in his smooth. <laughs> he's smooth. Yes, he is. And uh, the good mayor of San Diego, Kevin Faulkner, he fired a strike. Ceremonial first pitch, and he'll be joining us later. Yeah, like those numbers, you know, you know, it's two for nine. He, he's parked one off of Verlander. And hey, believe me, Justin Verlander knows that. He knows who's, who's in this book. He works carefully early in the count, two and zero. Oh. Went with the change up there. Fastball, slider, curveball, change up from Verlander. And you know what he'll do also? He will, he'll throw over there three, four times over to first base, even before throwing a pitch, like this 2 0 pitch. He might throw over there two or three times. He throws the ball very hard over to first base and very accurate on his throws as well. Very quick with his feet. Look at that. That was pretty close. Yeah. Mike Machlinski, his eyeballs right there on the bag and Able to rule it safe. Diving towards the outfield part of first base. It's the farthest point that Cabrera has to swipe tag, and Denorfia looks like just gets in there in time. Smith fouls off the 2 0 pitch. Yeah, Mark, there's a great story about Verlander when he was a high schooler at Richmond, Virginia. He borrowed 50 cents from a buddy and then he kiddingly said to that friend I'm going to pay you back an in interest when I sign a professional baseball contract someday. What was the interest rate back then. He was going to give him one tenth of one percent of his bonus when he signed. He signed. For three million one hundred twenty thousand dollars so it sounds like just a pittance one tenth of one percent. He gave his pal three thousand one hundred twenty Good for him a man Stay of up. his word. Look at that jump. And Denorfia steals without a throw. Well, Verlander does a lot of things extraordinarily well, but after trying to hold Denorfia on, he figured that he had him locked there at first. And Boy, and usually, you know, the infielders or the bench or whoever, they'll say step off. Verlander just stayed set. Watch Denorfia shuffle, shuffle. Verlander comes set off to the races. He must have in his mind just at that one point committed already didn't have a chance to step up and a break for San Diego. Nice job by Chris Norfia. So three and one the Padres have the tying run at second here with one out. And ball four. Good layoff to change up there. You know going back to the play by Denorfia, Maury Wills used to say it's easier to steal off a left hander than a right hander. He said I can't tell you how many times he's looking right at me and I'm breaking and he's already made up his mind yeah. and he can't throw over. You can't change right. You've made that commitment with your body have to go to the plate. Jed Jerko. For two games in a row now he's hit a long drive to right field that has befuddled the opposing right fielder. In Cleveland it became a triple an RBI triple and last night. Actually last night was the triple and uh, in Cleveland it was a double.
Look out. Looks like Verlander got squeezed on that first pitch, but you know what? That's a big league hang with him. <laughs> hey, sometimes you got the noose out already, yeah, huh? Just yeah. hang with him. First and second. And way out of the strike zone, the breaking ball. Nice slider. Jerko couldn't resist. One and one. Jed leads the team with five home runs. Andrew Kashner, he roots as hard for his teammates as anyone oh in yeah. that clubhouse. Back. Ooh, and there goes Denorfia to third. Whoa, what base running by Denorfia. He had a good lead at second. And when catcher Avila threw up the line trying to surprise Seth Smith, Denorfia said, thank you very much. I'll go over here to third base. These are the things that the Padres are going to have to do. I'm not going to say it's small ball. Well, yeah, it is kind of small ball, right? But taking advantage where the plays right in front of Chris Denorfia. He didn't even hesitate. As soon as he saw that throw go down to first base, he was off. That's just heads heads up. Chris Denorfia making some noise on the base paths early on. Second and third stolen bases. No, they're not going to give him a stolen base on that. What is it then? He just goes over on a catcher's choice. <laughs> That's certainly not defensive indifference. We'll see if there's a change in that ruling. Nevertheless, what's important, the Padres with one out have the tying run 90 feet away. Two and two to Jerko with Chase Headley waiting his turn. In the dirt, another good block. You know, Dick, initially, my, my gut reaction would be a stolen base. I mean, you have to account for him going to third base somehow, right? We'll wait for the official ruling, but that's what I have in my book for the moment. A steal of third. Headley with a big night last night, driving in three. Waits on deck. Full count to Jerko. We'll see if Smith is off on this pitch. No. Well, they go to third. Remember, you have to throw. You cannot fake over there. And a great job by Chris Denorfia. Get off as far third base as the third baseman is playing defensively. Plenty of help from the mm -hmm. superb third base coach, Glenn Hoffman. See how far he is off there? Get off just as far. Full count. Big early moment for the Padres. Trailing one nothing. First and third. And a high drive to left field. Davis settles under it, tagging his Denorfia. Here he comes. And the Padres tie it at one. So a single, a couple of stolen bases, and a sacrifice fly from Jerko, and the Padres are even. The Padres fighting and scratching for a run. Jerko gets a pitch on contact. Oh, he's out in front of it. But it's elevated, enabling him to hit it to left field for the sacrifice fly. That's a good job by Jed. Sure, he was fooled. You could tell by the swing right there. But got it up and out for the run. And Seth Smith wisely held at first base as the throw came into second. This is last night. Chase Headley who had an RBI double earlier. His first home run of the season. A two run shot deep into the seats and right. Part of the 6 0 San Diego win behind the one hitter from Andrew Kastner. You know, Chase said after the game last night he had that slider in the back of his mind because he struck out Cabrera with it in the fifth inning. Chase said that he recognized the pitch, it was a hanger, he turned on it, and the rest is history. Smith at first, two outs. The Padres tie it up here in the first. One and one. Unlike the Cleveland Indians defensively, they use the shift on both Smith and Headley with three men on the right side when Smith and Headley hit from the left side. They play it straight up here, Detroit. Ooh, shattered bat that's going to loop in front of the third baseman, Castellanos. No play. Headley has a broken bat hit. 
Well, that's how he snapped out of his slump yeah. with that broken bat RBI single that won the game in Cleveland two to one. Hey, and what's the old line after that base knock, Dick? It's a line drive in the box score. You got that right. And it keeps this first inning alive, and Verlander's already thrown 27 pitches. Chase Henley will gladly sacrifice that bat. Gets jammed. Oh, you talk about getting sawed off. And the bat coming by Justin Verlander. Wow. That's a dangerous flying missile that huge shard. Yonder Alonso. Alonso last night with a couple of hits, a double and a single. Slow curveball for a strike. Hey, maybe it's hits like that with two outs that gets everybody rolling. Hopefully Yonder Alonso can keep it going. X away from the fastball at 94. Verlander has more strikeouts and more wins than anyone in baseball since 2006. Talk about being on the hill and top of the hill. 30th pitch of this first inning. That's a good sign. That's a good hack. That's one of those pitches that you might only see during an at bat. And I'm thinking, I can't speak for Yonder, but he wants that pitch back. Oh, get on it, just work it underneath of it a little bit. Uh, middle, middle in. They come crunch time, Verlander can get with it now. Runners in scoring position for his career. Hitters are hitting 238. The runners in scoring position for his career. Ground ball right side. Kinsler has plenty of time to field and throw, and the inning is over. But the Padres come back with a run. Tenorfia single, a couple of steals, and the sacrifice fly from Jed Jerko. And we're even at one. The star of last night, the one hit man, complete game shutout. Andrew Kashner will join us when we return. So the Padres manufacture a run in the first game tied 1 1 as we go to the second Nick Castellanos leads it off for the Tigers. He'll be followed by Avila and Gonzalez as Andrew Kashner a near no hitter last night just one flare single. I, I, I'm going to ask you Andrew. Who hit you hardest with the pie that was the hardest hit you took last night. I think the, the lid to the Gatorade bottle hurt the worst. Oh that was <laughs> who got you. Uh, I think I believe it was uh, Grandal and uh, Hondo. Man, a two-man effort. Huh? <laughs> Cash last night, Rene Rivera did a great job. How did you guys work? If you were to ask, ask you know, the catcher was awesome last night. Yeah, I mean Rene's game calling ability and you know his ability to stick a moving fastball—it's incredible. 
Uh, I mean, I just think, you know, we have a, a great uh, communication and, you know, just between starts and, you know, he catches my bullpens and, you know, just always talking about uh, the game throughout the game, talking about hitters in the video room. I mean, I, I think it's been great. Final question. Last year in Pittsburgh, 27 men faced a one hitter. Last night, which one was the better? I felt like last night was. I mean, these guys, you know, they uh, <clears throat> One win short of the World Series, I believe. Uh, you know, I, I think that this lineup is, a, a, is definitely a tougher lineup. They have a lot more guys that can hit the ball out of the park. I mean, they got the best player in baseball on their team. But I tell you what, Padre fans and fans around the country are looking forward to your pitching assignments the rest of the year, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. And Castellanos is aboard as a boot in the infield of the Padres. <laughs> Well, that was nice of Andrew Cashman to take some time. And as we take a look at that ball off the bat, very makeable play for Chase Headley. Chase had a throwing error last night. I ruled that an E5. Well, they had an error up there. Now they, oh, they put it back up. E5. Chase wants that one back. Like a hitter missing a fastball, Chase wants that one back. Very makeable play for the Gold Glove third baseman. One, two, three. Yeah. Off the thumb. Throwing error last night. Reliable third baseman, as you mentioned, Gold Glove a couple of years ago. Avila, two for 19. The switch hitting catcher is off to a slow start with a bat. As much as I think most every baseball fan appreciates the beauty, the old beauty of the Tigers' home uniform. Yeah, you know, the road somehow doesn't quite click with no. me, even though I'm from that area as a kid. I like the old gray flannels with the block letters Detroit across the chest, like the Norm Cash days. Yeah, I, I preferred those. Just a taste. A little more color here with the orange and the script Detroit. I'd say it would be a good taste right about now. How about Avila trying to roll one over, or pull a baseball, and get a double play after that? Miscue by Chase down at third base. I like your palate. That'll make a fan happy into the second tier. And it was one of the lead stories on the late night sports, ESPN, and other networks, including Fox. Andrew Kastner, near no hitter, 46 years. Somebody going to throw one? Uh, maybe this year. Maybe the man we just chatted. Sure. With. Two and two. Here's the elevated fastball from Ian Kennedy with the count one and two, thinking that Avila would chase. That was way up around the bill of the cap. Now I think a good counter pitch would be a nice changeup down in the zone after. Pitch number four up in the zone, trying to keep the ball away. I think with the intention of a swing and a miss here for a strikeout or trying to roll one over for a double play ball. Kennedy, a fine outing his last in Miami, went six innings, allowed only one run and three hits. Back to the fastball for a second strikeout. Well, let's uh, check on our cold heart fact tonight. Brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Andrew Kastner joins Randy Jones and Bruce Hurst as the only pitchers to have two career one hitters with the Padres. Those two left handers and now the right hander Kastner with 11 strikeouts. And that one pitch there had more movement than you can believe. Unbelievable. And, and that was probably the worst pitch. I, I shouldn't say. Worst pitch as far as location was concerned because all the rest of his pitches, the two seamers, were exactly where he wanted to throw them. You talk about a pitcher locked in last night. And then to finish his work against the most valuable player, Miguel Cabrera, with a strikeout. Quite a, quite a flare and an exclamation point to the victory last night. Alex Gonzalez, well traveled shortstop, now in Detroit, four for 16. Picked up. As a free agent. Filling the void of the uh, injury to young Iglesias. 
And in case you missed the postgame show after that marvelous work by Andrew Kashner, here comes Grandall. Watch out. Oh. And Grandall, boy, does he carefully oh. avoid Kristen. What Kastner was talking about when the Gatorade Hundley, the, oh. the lid or something, the edge hit Kastner. He yeah. said that was the worst hit of the night. He had ice in his ear. And the countdown goes to two and one on Alex Gonzalez. Castellanos at first base, safe on the air. The one hit for the Tigers and watch Jerko at second base. Almost got there. We asked Jed, how close did you come? He said, it was all DNA if I had just been born with longer <laughs> arms. <laughs> he said he thought it was pretty close. Great effort. He's in certainly an arm's length, but he needed another extension. And the count full. Or rather, three and one now to Gonzalez. And I think the shot of the night was Andrew Kasher giving him the old salute, saying, "Hey, way to stretch it out there, way to give it your all to trying to snag that one." And you know, pitchers appreciate that, no doubt. And Andrew Kasher showed his appreciation to Jed. Pops him up, right side. Jerko calls off. No, it's going to be, yeah, Lonzo gives ground and Jerko makes the play for the second out. Most consecutive hitless at bats to start a career. Mr. Justin Verlander is 0 for 26, but you add his playoffs, he's 0 for 29. And Mark Grant down there, he starts his career 0 for 26. My, I did, oh my. my goodness, that's that's horrible. That's horrible. You must have broken up with a flurry, though, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the 26 outs prior to that, you should have seen how hard the ball was hit. And you squared, oh, just squared him up. Oh, it was just bad luck. Adam balls, right to gloves, huh? Diving plays. Yeah. It's a mean world out there. To hang with them. <laughs> That's where you learned that. Look at that! There's his first hit of his career. We jinxed it. It's a Mark Grant. <laughs> and that was the one thing talking to the Detroit Tiger. Uh, look, they want the ball. They want the ball. Kennedy throws it over to the Padre dugout. He doesn't feel good. That while Verlando has a big smile, Kennedy certainly so didn't like it. But just a fastball right down the middle. And this is something that they would give Justin Verlander a hard time about. You know, you can't give him a hard time about his pitching. But this is where the error in the yep. Tigers getting a fourth out in the inning comes to play. Two on, two out. Inning should be over. Rajay Davis, he singled the right field to start the game. Make a good pitch here and get out of this inning. Leave two stranded for Ian Kennedy, hopefully. Davis with the only hit last night. Well, he went down and got it. It was a pitch down. Hey, if you're swinging, you're dangerous. Yeah. Disbelief smile. Line toward right and foul. Davis making good contact. You could see him really trying to inside out, hit the inside part of that baseball and drive it to the right side of the diamond. Leander Alonso way off the bag at first base. What is it? The blind acorn finding a squirrel? Is that what that <laughs> hit was? <laughs> exactly. One and one to Davis, two outs, two on, and a tie game here in the second. Ian Kenny wants to roll over the signs with the runner on second base. Castellanos. Verlander at first. 
That ball driven deep and fortunately hooking foul way back into the upper tier. Strike two. And choking up on the bat, and you can see how far in front Davis connects on that pitch. Way out in front of it. It's a home run in cricket. That's a six indeed. Struck him out. So Kennedy pitches around the air and the single. We go to the bottom of the second, the lower third of the order. It'll be Grandall, then Venable, and Kennedy for the Padres. The game tied at one. tie ball game and guys I got the lowdown on what happened with the pie in the face incident because Cash and I were out here everyone else was inside but was the Osmani Grandal went to the equipment manager and he said hey save me a pie in the cafeteria what he didn't know is Nick Hunley had gone and gotten the Gatorade he said we kind of screwed up next time maybe a little better communication also word to Nick Hunley take off the lid because Cashner did say he got whacked pretty hard in the noggin he also told me that next time if I don't give him a warning I'm going to get the Gatorade bath as well. I did ask Kashner also when he went back and looked at his phone, how many congratulatory text messages did he have? 150. That's a lot to reply well, to. Well, that's almost all of Conroy, Texas. <laughs> the one stoplight there. And Thanks, Chris. Good report yeah. there. Well, you've got to thank Yasmani, Chris, for how cleverly he moved around you and planted that pie face to face. Area spot on your nice outfit. Speaking of Grandall, he leads off here in the second and sends a soft high fly ball left field for one away. Will Venable the batter. Will is due. He's the only battery without a hit last night. We didn't even talk about Kastner's base running yes. skills. He did it all last night. The hit. First to third on another base hit and scoring uh, with the infield in on a hot smash to short. Look well, that 89 mile an hour fastball just to get ahead, but good location from Verlander. Uh, not wide of Verlander, so that's an easy out. Well, it's time for you to tweet your photo fans using hashtag SD fan photo. You'll get a chance to have it shown in one of our game telecasts brought to you by AT&T. Well, it begs uh, an answer from Mark Grant. So you'll be forever tied now with Justin Verlander, 26 
at bats yeah. before your first hit. Now you'll be tied. Isn't that something? But your first hit. I want to know. Uh, did you crush one off the wall? No, what? hardly. I was ordered to sacrifice. I squared. I bunted. It was off of left-handed pitcher Guy Hoffman of the Cincinnati Reds at Candlestick Park. Did he make the Hall of Fame? I don't. Think. Uh, next ballot. Next ballot. So, and I beat it out with my speedy legs and was credited with a base hit. And the rest is history. You saved the ball. I did. I've got the ball and a bat. <laughs> it's up in the attic collecting dust. The Kay. rats have probably chewed through it. Kennedy trying to repeat what Verlander did to him. But he falls down on the count one and two. Oh, that's wicked. A breaking ball strike three. So after 31 pitches in the first inning, Verlander retires the side on just seven tosses in the second. We're even at one at Petco. Work is the place to turn before every slam, every goal, every game with America's pregame only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Tune in to America's pregame weekdays at 3 p.m. Pacific only on Fox Sports 1. To find Fox Sports 1 on your cable satellite provider, go to FoxSports1.com. A 1 1 tie, top of the third, it'll be Kinsler. Hunter and Cabrera for the Tigers against Ian Kennedy. Kinsler doubled to left center field to drive in the Tiger run in the first inning, and he hits that one by Headley. That's got another double written it on it. As going into the corner is Smith, and Kinsler will take a big turn at second and put on the brakes. Back to back doubles for the Tiger second baseman. First pitch offering to Kinsler was a get me over curveball. It really wasn't one of those curveballs with two strikes where you try to put him away and chase Headley back of the bag a couple feet with two hopper out of his reach for the curveball speeding up the bat of Ian Kinsler for his third double of the year. Now the table set by Kinsler for Tory Hunter, Miguel Cabrera, and Austin Jackson in the middle of the Tiger lineup. Hunter. Struck out swinging the first time. Lines to right field, but Denorfia has him played perfectly and gets his throw back in. No advance by Kinsler. Line up, one away. You know, this is a situation where Ian Kennedy, you notice that the runner's on second base, but keeping the ball in front of the runner, maybe he's throwing some off speed stuff to they pull to that side. To keep that runner at second base. You know that line shot right there to right field. A good job by Ian Kennedy. 
to prevent the runner from going to third. The Adam ball gives Cabrera long out to right center field his first time. Yeah, and, and this is where Cabrera, you know, he had eight at bats in Los Angeles against the Dodgers. Four at bats last night in eight of the 12 so far have been to the second base side short shortstop side of second base and that's not the Miguel Cabrera that the Tigers know trying to hook everything trying to pull everything and that's when he can get into trouble the first time he went to right center and that ball caught on the warning path by Venom. even that swing there from Cabrera looks like he's trying to inside and go the other way this ball is right down the middle. Still only 31 years of age. Yeah. The most valuable player in the last two years, and there's one of the reasons why as he hooks that one right on the line. Maybe a foot inside the line. That'll bring Kinsler home easily, and Cabrera with an RBI double. Just a nice, easy swing. And the Tigers lead two to one. It looked like another hanging breaking ball. You hang a breaking ball like that to Cabrera, he can do some serious damage to it. You see, he hits the top half of the ball, rolls it over, some top spin on that one, keeping it just fair. Tigers with five hits, three of them doubles. Once again, not where Ian Kennedy wanted that breaking ball. So a double by Kinsler, a line out to right off the bat of Hunter, then Cabrera delivers an RBI double. Give the Tigers the lead 2 1. Austin Jackson fly to right. Chase Denorfia deep into the right field corner to make his catch. That's only the fourth RBI of the season for Cabrera. We were chatting with Joaquin Benoit, the relief pitcher that the Padres acquired from the Tigers in the offseason or on as a free agent and ask him, you know, you were a teammate, you watched him hit. How would you pitch? There's Benoit on the bullpen. How would you pitch to Cabrera? He said, Well, the one thing you learn is you never get too confident. If you get him the first three times, watch out the fourth. Mm -hmm. He just is the kind of hitter that eventually he's got punishment in the back. Three and oh now to Jackson. Could be green lighted by Brad Osmus here. It is and fouls it away. You just can't fall into a pattern against Cabrera. And when he's on, he's tough to get out, no doubt about it, because he uses the whole field and uses right center field. He'll turn on the hanging breaking ball like he did there for the double. And once again, the hitters surrounding Cabrera in the lineup, they've got to be smiling. Ball four. And Jackson joins Cabrera with one out. First walk from Ian Kennedy. And that'll bring up the young third baseman, Nick Castellanos. He was safe on the air by Headley his first time up. And Karen Balsley wants to go out and offer a suggestion to Ian Kennedy. Well now you've got to force at any base. You know one of the things that Darren Balsley talks about is just as a reminder hey let's try to work down here it might be hey what do you want to go with first pitch. Work down with a sinker work down with a little cut fastball maybe. Maybe just going out because Castellanos being a rookie and Kennedy not having faced him might be reminding him of what they saw in the video as sure. they studied before the game. A refresher course on the scouting report. 2 1 Tigers here in the top of the third. Lavery infield up the middle, squeeze towards second a step, looking for the double play chance. Good pitch. Two seamer. Actually, I think uh, 
Ian, I want to correct myself. That that four seam fastball of his runs like that. He throws a four seam fastball to go along with that curve slider and change. Wouldn't get him to chase one and two to the lanky third baseman Castellanos. So now look at the sequence of pitches there, right? That was a change up. Get him leaning a little bit outside part of the plate. This is where we've talked about Kennedy elevating the fastball out of the zone for the swing and miss or the pop up. Center field. Venable charging hard and is there for the catch. No advance by the runners, two away. Good pitch, good two strike pitch. It was down to the zone. It kind of tied up Castellanos a little bit. Check out the glove of Grandal. So it kind of leaks in a little bit in her third, but out in front of it, the body of Castellanos leaning out in front, catching him out in front. As you take a look at the pitch count, 50 tosses for Ian. The catcher, Alex Alvila, struck out swinging the first time. But if you can limit the damage to one here in this inning, mentioned Avila last time up, struck out. A single by Davis, a double Kinsler got the run in the first inning for Detroit, and here in the third, Kinsler with a leadoff double and Cabrera bringing him around with a double into the left field corner. Change up again. He does like that pitch. Mm -hmm. Slowed down the pace a little bit too, huh? One and one. Yes, both pitchers. That last fastball, 93, you know, in the last inning when he struck out Rajay Davis to end the second, 94 on the fastball for Ian Kennedy. That's about as fast as yeah. we've seen him throw. Yep, yeah, that's a good giddy up. A good pitch. Two and one. Some of the fans down behind home plate moaning on that call thought that Kennedy had a strike, but Fox track shows it was off the plate. Two on, two out to run home, and here's the two one delivery. Pretty consistent with all of his pitches, Ian Kennedy. Well, he gets up on top. You know, he's a long strider, so sometimes he works underneath the baseball, which can work against him. Well, that pitch right there, hey, looks picture perfect to me. Good follow through. High backside with the foot. So he's working down there to Avila. Long time studying the sign. Now the 2 2 pitch. If you're going to miss, miss down here. Got him swinging. Kennedy with his fourth strikeout and the inning, but doubles by Kinsler and Cabrera, and the Tigers have regained the lead. Coming up in the bottom half of the inning, top of the order for the Padres, Cabrera, Donofia, and Seth Smith.
A 1 1 pitch. A 1 hopper to Nettles. To Wiggins. And the Padres have the National League finish. Oh, Ducker. You can hang a star on that, baby. Uh, the beloved Colonel Jerry Coleman with a call as the San Diego Padres won the National League pennant and headed to the World Series against the Detroit Tigers. The Bengals would prevail 4-1 in the series, but a great year in Padres history. Yeah, after being down 0-2 in the series and then fighting back three in a row. And how about those Tigers? 35-5 start <laughs> to the regular season in 1984. They coasted home from uh, late May. Tigers have regained the lead here 2 1. So we go to the last of the third. Everett Cabrera, he grounded the first his initial at bat. Looked like he tried to punch that one to left field yep. to change it. Yep. And as we surmised in the first inning, if you're keeping score, they finally have credited Denorfia with a stolen base when he took third. It was just like a no call for a while, so he gets two steals and scored the run with his legs. He literally did steal a run in that inning. A ball, a strike to Cabrera. Eight for the last 17. Eight for 18 with the out in the first inning. Lines that for a base hit. Five game streak. And he's going to get more than one out of this. On his way to second, and he'll coast in with a double. Cabrera's hot hitting continues. Leadoff double. The Padres trying to come right back. Now we talked about it in the pregame show. Everett Cabrera from the left side making some adjustments. That ball is middle in, it's up a little bit. One thing is he gets on top of that ball to send it left center field gap and like I said taking it that way over the shortstop's head for Alex Gonzalez. And he had enough behind that stroke to send it almost to the warning path for an easy double. Nice easy swing that kind of overswing good results for the Padres shortstop. There's his long sleeve Padre t-shirt of the giveaway tonight kids enjoying those. So Denorfia situational squares and takes a strike. That's not a bad idea. No. I don't think he's sacrificing, but he does bring in, especially the corners of the infield. Maybe that'll open up a bigger hole. Yeah, get some movement on the infield. The Northfield with a line single, then he stole second and stole third. Both surprise moves. And that positioned him to score on Jerko's sacrifice fly in the first. Fifteen hits now for Cabrera to lead the club. Opened tonight at 350. No. Check, checks the swing. Oh. No. First base umpire Muchlinski said you went around. Well, that'll be interesting to see. I wonder if we have a side angle. Ooh, of course we do. Let's see. Yeah, I thought he went. Absolutely. Barrel of the bat was way out in front of the hands, yeah. too. Looked like he checked. He yeah. did a good job of trying to hold back. So now in the hole, two strikes. Wow, both pitchers, Verlander and Kennedy, with men on base, super deliberate. Foul tip, strike three. Well, it's a changeup. Second strikeout for Verlander. That's got to be so tough for a hitter because you've got the curveball in the back of your mind. You've got the changeup in the back of your mind. Tough at bat. That'll bring up Seth Smith, who walked the first time. First five games of the season. The Padre scoring only eight runs. A improvement the last five with 18 runs. That's a good sign, huh? Uh -huh. Let the 18 progress. base hits, three times. The extra base hits. In fact, they're up among the major league leaders in doubles. Came into this game 13 doubles in the last three games and 17 on the season and 18 now with Cabrera. And that ranks third in the majors. Double or nothing, huh? I like it. Off speed to Seth Smith.
Believe it or not, Dick, Justin Verlander throws a seamless curveball. We've talked about the grip of the curveball before. There's a traditional way. I pop up shallow in center. Austin Jackson, boy, that was way up there, makes the catch for the second out. I've showed the grip of a curveball. Traditionally, a lot of pitchers show the four seam curveball. They'll put their middle finger on this seam right here and then get on top of it and do that, right? So you get that rotation. Talk to Rodney Allen, the color analyst for the Detroit Tigers. Justin Verlander throws a seamless curveball. See the horseshoe here? He'll take his fingers and throw it right here. Almost what? like a dry spitter. What do you think? I, it's just a feel thing. It's probably something he did as a kid. And he gets up on top of it and throws it. But very, very unorthodox. A seamless curveball out of the hand of Justin Verlander. Here's Jerko. There Not, it is. Knocked in the run with a fly ball to left field in the first inning. A chance to add another to his RBI total. Tops on the club with six at the moment. We just saw a seamless curveball right there to Jed Jerko for strike one. Right in the heart of the plate. Mm -hmm. High fly ball behind second. Right fielder Hunter has a beat on it. And the Padres get the leadoff double, but can't move Cabrera around. After three at Petco, Tigers two, Padres one. Screen now that helps them to enjoy the game all can peer into the stadium as well as uh, watching it on the big screen. And it's time now for the Southwest Airlines military spotlight. And that reminds us that tomorrow is our military opening day. Tyson Ross against Max Scherzer, pitching matchup, and we salute the military as always on Sunday. Team will be in their camo uniforms. Tigers send up Gonzalez, Verlander, and Davis here in the fourth inning, leading two to one. In fact, on this day in history, Padres made some team history in 2001. I can believe that's 13 years ago they first wore the camel Oh, uniforms. wow. And, uh, you know, all the little leaguers around San Diego enjoy wearing the various. Padre uniforms mm -hmm. the different colors and styles and uh, the most popular is the camo. Fly ball the center field innocent enough and Venable. Squeezes the first down. And that'll bring up the hot hitting Justin Verlander he is in a one at bat hitting streak. It was a fastball down around the knees he went down and got it and set it right back to where it came from right up the box.
after Verlander threw Kennedy a wicked curveball to strike him out. See how he and uh, counters in this at bat, especially since Verlander has touched him up with a single. Yeah, that's not fair, is it? Throwing E. Kennedy, old yacker for strike three. What's wrong with that one? I guess down the middle doesn't count. Right there. That's yeah, it was. Strike two. Three and oh, and he's thrown a couple balls right on the knees, according to Fox Tracks. Not getting the calls. There's a strike. Umpire Buckmeister likes him up a little higher. Another hit. Throw him out. Throw him out. Throw to first base. Not in time. Oh, that was going to be close. If the North hit could have gotten the throw on the fly to Alonso. He might have nailed him, but he bounced it once, and that gave Verlander a chance to put it in not high gear, but at least to a second gear. Well, believe me, Justin Verlander had this in mind as soon as this ball was struck. He hits it pretty well. Now the race is on. Look at it, right out of the box. Verlander's picking him up, putting him down, and just beats it out. Now you say, how do you figure this game? You come out to the ballpark, you see something new, you come to the park, and as you saw in our graphic, here's Verlander, his entire major league career, no hits and 26 at best. Oh, for 26. And so we thought, oh, that's a nice uh, little note. We'll uh, play that out, and that played right into your 0 for 26. Right. And then he gets a 2 for 2 night going. Tell you what, I would have lost some money because I would have bet he would have been 0 for. Right? I, I would have bet. You figure that's an automatic out down there. And now this one isn't as Davis has another hit, a line drive single that advances Verlander to second. And the Tigers threatened to add to the 2 1 lead. A well, reminder tonight after the game and after the Padres live postgame show a one hour documentary on spotlight and it's a fascinating old footage of the development of Petco Park from the, the very start from the foundation through the structuring the architecture oh, wow. the politics and the impact of Petco Park on the city of San Diego. I got to set the DVR for that one that yeah. looks extraordinary. Kinsler up twice a pair of doubles. He's doubled in a run and scored himself after a double in the third. He's presented with first and second and one out. So stay tuned after the game tonight right here on Fox Sports San Diego after the Padres win this one. All about Petco Park. That's that's going to be great. I think it's all the secret strategy to put Verlander on the bases and wear him out. There you go. <laughs> He's not used to being out there. Hey, this is where a pitcher, you know, you get a little rattled maybe. This is where you have to eliminate that and make good quality pitches. Uh -oh. that at bat. Three and oh. That at bat to Justin Verlander, you know, he got squeezed. Okay, nothing you can do. He got the base hit. All right. Try to work for a grounder right here. Torrey Hunter on deck and Miguel Cabrera in the hole. This is a tough spot in the batting order. You got to throw a strike and Hunter, a dangerous hitter. Takes a strike. Next pitch will be number 70. Not hard enough for a double play. Jerko will get the out at first as the runners advance. Two outs to Tory Hunter. And it's time now for the Southwest Airlines spray chart on Tory Hunter. Hits by direction this season. You can see Tory Hunter pretty much a pull hitter. Four to left, one to center, and one to right. And with that said, Will Venable plays on the first base side of second base and center field. Just a skosh going the other way in the outfield. And it looks like Seth Smith in left pretty much straight away. And that one shot right up the middle. That's going to get two more home. Verlander first and then Davis. And the Tigers lead four to one on a two run single from Torrey Hunter. 
His eighth and ninth runs batted end of the season. He leads Detroit. And first pitch offering from Ian Kennedy. He wants it down and away. And once again, it leaks right down the middle of the plate. And a good piece of hitting by Torrey Hunter. He hit that ball exactly where it was pitched. Too good of a pitch for the first pitch there. Wanted it down and away. And Tim Stauffer heats up. A lot of righties, only one lefty. Alex Avila in the lineup for the Tigers. All right handers. So Tim Stauffer starts heating up. So at this point of the game, early in the fourth inning, one of the stories, Justin Verlander, not his pitching necessarily, his hitting. He's two for two and he scored his first major league run. And the hits are his first major league hits. Now Cabrera doubled in a run the last time up. Fly deep to right center for an out back in the first inning. Boy, in the pitch count, we mentioned that getting up there. The 72nd pitch coming up right here. Pulled deep to third, just foul. Just foul. So Cabrera coming into the game three for the last 20 without an RBI, but he's hit the ball hard twice this evening. Deep fly to right center to the warning path, and then the double into the left field corner to drive in a run. Fly ball. The Norfia has plenty of room. And that's it for the Tigers, but led by Verlander's single, Van Davis. And they come home on Hunter's single. It's four to one. Padres Baseball by GMC. See why incredible thinking is everywhere. Visit your local GMC dealer today. By Petco, where the healthy pets go. By Mercury Insurance. Mercury Insurance is giving away Padres tickets. Learn more at mercuryinsurance.com backslash Padres. And by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at Southwest. And the Padres work to be done trailing four to one here on our baseball night in San Diego this Saturday evening and every Saturday night will be very special throughout the season always a special gift from the Padres those long sleeve t-shirts the kids enjoying those that look, look like nice little pajamas nightwear yeah. for the kids. Yeah. Huh? Looks like one of those things like out in front of a car dealership where they got those, you know, air machines and the arms just going back and forth. Good call. Chase Headley. Broken bad base hit the first time up. Well, the Padres need to find some way to get this crowd back into it. I talked to Chase Headley last night after the game. He said, you know what? The crowd was just phenomenal. You know, the music during the games, the, the, the fans were pumped up. And, and that was part of it, I think, you know, that, that helps the players, right? They, they love that stuff. Mm -hmm. Got plenty of voices here today, and that ball is drilled fair right over the bag at first base. 
Right on cue. Headley drives one into the right field corner. And he has a stand up double. A double, double, double is the name of the game tonight and for the Padres this season. Got to inch back some way. Got to fight. You got to scratch against Verlander. And that's a mistake from Verlander. He wanted it down and away. That one leaks right down the middle of the plate. Belt buckle high. Measured perfectly right over the bag. Nicely done. And chip away at that 4 1 lead. Padres got the leadoff double in the last inning from Cabrera, but Denorfia Smith and Jerko couldn't bring him home. Now let's see how Alonso, Rondol, and Venable do. In there. Alonso, ground out to second base, his first at bat. Hitting an even 200 on the season. High fly. Davis camped under it. Went away. Well, Mark Sweeney, welcome. How you doing, guys? How you doing down there? Excellent. What do you got on Justin Verlander? Well, Justin Verlander, you talked about Mark an unorthodox curveball that he throws, not using the seams. Rod Allen, the analyst, told me that about that too. But it's also a curveball that you do not want to swing at early in the count. It's a very tough pitch to pick up. It has a big break. So try to eliminate that early until you get two strikes. Sometimes tough to do. Yeah, it's a 12 to sixer, man. That's off the table. And uh, you don't see too many good ones like that. Yasmani Grandal flied to left the first time. He's been swinging at that first pitch time and time again. As, then, you, as you know, Mark, too, it's hard for the umpire, too, to call that pitch. Sometimes yes. very difficult to see that long as we take a look at the pitch to Yasmani Grandal, that changeup, very difficult to pick up out of the hands. <laughs> just, when, just when you have that number two in the back of your mind, now you got to deal with the changeup. And then he, you know, 94 with the fastball on the inside part of the plate. Quite a repertoire for Justin Verlander. And look at the speed range there. 77 probably on the curveball or the changeup. And then he can hump it up. 95. He can go north of 95 now. There's the curveball. Inside oh. taken by Grandal. Two and one. He has money. Good numbers for the Padre catcher. Huh? He got squeezed on that last pitch. Pitch number three on the inside corner with the curveball. Broken bat looper. That's going to fall for a base hit. Read well by Headley. He's around third. He'll score. And the Padres cut into the lead. It's four to two. Broken bat base hit for Grandall. His second RBI. Mark Sweeney stayed back just enough to get that changeup out of the hand of Verlander. Well, you got to use your lower half, especially on that changeup. It got fooled with the first changeup in the, earlier in the bat, but you can see the legs working and the hands follow that, getting the barrel to it. Yes, it's a broken bat, but a nice RBI single by Yasmani Grandal. Hunter in right field tried to bluff Headley, but Headley saw it off the bat, knew it was going to fall for a hit. He scores easily. It's four to two. And here's Venable representing the tying run. Grandall is so strong. Yes, he is. He's going to get hits like that. Venable tried to bunt his way on, but hit it right back to the pitcher for an easy out. And this could be two. There's one. There's two. Oh, did they get the call at second base? Good base running by Grandal. He was able to duck under Kinsler's tag and avoid the double play. No argument for me and Kinsler. Yasmani hit the dirt. The whiff. Nicely done. Yeah. So it's. Simply a 4 3 put out with Grandal moving in scoring position. See if there's daylight. Hits the dirt. Daylight. No tag. Hey, credit Mike Winters. He was all over it, right? He was right there. It's a tough call. Man. Two outs, runner in scoring position. Kennedy a chance with, to help himself. 
Tries to bunt his way. It's a pretty good bunt. Here's the throw by Castellanos. He oh. makes the play. Good play by the young third baseman. The Padres come back with a run on a couple of hits. After four, it's a 4-2 Detroit advantage. T fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag SD fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming Padres telecast brought to you by AT&T and uh, Rick and company. We've got the blues, the whites, and the browns in Padre <laughs> flannels. Bad Daddy Rick 619 represent. Bad Daddy. Yeah, showing some uh, Padre colors. Hey, there's a Mark Fidrich fan. The bird. Yeah, I saw Fedrich in his rookie year in yeah. Detroit. What a character! What a he was fun to watch. Oh, he was the one. He, he was a groundskeeper. Yeah, he was a talk to the ball. Talk right? the ball. The ball talked back to him. Yeah. I understand. He, that's the only time it's ever happened in Major League Baseball. <laughs> he actually the baseball would converse with Fedrich. Shame he died very young in a in an accident, a tractor accident. Tractor fell on him. 4-2 as we move to the top of the fifth inning. Austin Jackson, then Nick Castellanos and Alex Avila for the Tigers. Jackson has walked and flied to right. A fly to right again. This is curling foul into foul territory. What a play! Yonder Alonzo scrambling to the warning path and making a very difficult ball. Let's hope he comes up okay. Might have turned that ankle a bit. Boy, to read that over the shoulder catch. That's a wide receiver draft in the upcoming NFL draft. He can catch that ball. I thought Yonder had no chance at this. He made a play like that earlier in the season and oh, looks like flash look, warning track, extends. Boy, what a great effort picking up his pitcher, Ian Kennedy. Now that is some kind of nice. And that's a Yonder Alonso 20 pounds lighter that wouldn't yes. have made that catch a year ago. So that diet paying off in many ways for Yonder. Here's Castellanos with one out. Safe on an error and fly to center. Lanky six foot four inch rookie. Guys, which makes that play very difficult for Yonder Alonso. He sees the ball in the air, but he has to put his head down, then find it again in the twilight. Very difficult play, but. Outstanding play like you talked about. And long view into Petco Park. What a beautiful scene. The postcard. Castellanos. A ball and a strike. Just on your first sample here of this uh, rookie. What do you think Mark? Well, I like this guy because if you looked at him they had early batting practice. Before the series, and you saw bat speed, and it was a different sound off his bat. Talk to Wally Joyner about this 
young man, and he says high praise for him. He said this guy is going to be outstanding and one of those young players to talk about in the game. Yeah, their best hitting prospect for the Tigers, Mark. He played third base, left field. Good all around hitter. Well, the Tigers are so hitting poor, it's nice that they have a young <laughs> yes. kid that can join this lineup. Goodness. He goes down swinging on the changeup. Five strikeouts for Ian Kennedy. Two outs to Avila. Great pitch, and this is exactly what Ian Kennedy needs a quick inning after the Gold Glove performance on Yonder Alonso. He throws the Gold Glove pitch, changeup way out in front. Castellanos goes back to the dugout on the swing and miss. Ernie Harwell, right? <laughs> Hey, Alex Avila struggling. Two strikeouts. He needs to stick to his strength, Ian Kennedy. And a quick one, two, three inning. Avila, two for 21 on the season. Well, the Padres, this is their fifth home game at Petco. The first four averaging 34,600. We have more than that. Must be in the 40s tonight. And we should have another good crowd on our military opening day tomorrow. Final game of the Tigers, and we'll see the Cy Young winner, Max Scherzer, against Tyson Ross of the Padres. There's that changeup. Yeah, I guess that they put a little spin on that one. A little yeah. Bit of curve on that. Good call, Professor. The old number two. Back door on the outside corner. He wants this one down. Hey, bounce it. He yes, went. He did. Strike three. Strikeouts number five and six for Ian Kennedy. Retires the side in order for the first time. We're at the halfway mark in this one. Lander, the one of the aces for the Tigers, has allowed a couple of runs and five hits. Strikes out to Norfia on that occasion, but it's Ben Verlander with a bat. Hitless in his major league career, he's got two hits. And Miguel Cabrera, well, you know he's going to hit, and there's a double that rattles around the corner and left to drive in a run. Padres get one back on a broken bat single by Grandal that chases Headley home. It's a 4 2 game as we move to the top of the fifth inning. Four runs and eight hits for the Tigers. Two runs and five hits for San Diego. Bottom of the fifth. Top of the order. Everett Cabrera, Kristen Norfia, Seth Smith against Verland. Just keep scratching, keep fighting. A walk here, maybe a base hit there. And for Ian Kennedy and the pitching staff, possibly the bullpen when Buddy 
Black goes to that bullpen. You get just got to concentrate and try and throw up zeros. On the other hand, Detroit has the fifth worst bullpen right. in baseball, 5.64 ERA. So Padres keep Verlander working at pitch count at 61 and get into the pen. Although Verlander, for him to throw a uh, hundred pitches is uh, really below average. He he's a willing right arm to go well over a hundred. Cabrera uh, doubled the last time but the Padres couldn't take advantage. Well let's take a look at that that double and the uh, boy on contact you know th this is ever Cabrera taking advantage of a mistake Fox vision on contact and taking it the other way and not over swinging. You know, Mark Sweeney talked about it earlier today when we had some lunch. There he chops it to shortstop. They got to hurry the throw. And he is pulled out. The tag made by Cabrera. Miguel Cabrera on Everett Cabrera. Good play by the big man at first to save his shortstop. The throw was pulling him off the bag. Well, Mark, that's a case of Everett Cabrera trying to go the other way, but not over swinging. He's in the whole field. And that's, that's one thing. Putting the ball on the ground and utilizing his speed as Miguel Cabrera places the tag on Everth Cabrera for the out. Clearly he got all of Everth going by. Well, that's a good way of uh, a first baseman getting hurt too. Verlander applauding the effort. Donorfia has singled and scored. Stolen a couple of bases and actually he stole that run in the first inning after a single and a steal of second and third and came home on a sacrifice flying Jerko struck out the last time. Solid start for Denorfia, 296 on the new year. Two and one. When in 2011, with a 24 and 5 year, Verlander won the Cy Young, and then also the most valuable player. He became only the second player in baseball to win as a pitcher the most valuable player and the Cy Young. Was it another Tiger? No, you got to go back though to the 1950s. For a starting pitcher? A Brooklyn Dodger. And we get to see him most every time we go up to Dodger Stadium. You're talking about the nuke? The big Don Nukem. Don Nukem. What a pitcher. What a guy. And there's a man who could really swing the bat, too. Two balls, two strikes. He's one of the Dodger ambassadors. Foul tip, strike three. Verlander gets to Norfia for the second time. That's his third strikeout. Takes us to our Supan vacation strikeout statistic. Most K's by a pitcher since 2006. How about that? Verlander, then King Felix, Sabathia, Lincecum, Hamels. Oh, that's a lot of strikes. It's a lot of swings and misses. A lot of called thirds, too, as well. Seth Smith, Singleton's, excuse me, walked. In the first inning, and fly to center his last time. Seventy pitches now for Verlander. You know, I think one of the things to look at Mark Sweeney and Dick Enberg is, you know, you just mentioned it, Dick, the Padres. Verlander's only struck out three. The, the strikeouts are down for Verlander, so they're they're doing a good job of putting the ball in play, right? I mean, that's one way of looking at it. One and two. Now, Mark, I agree with you, and you can see them, the Padres battling in the, the batter's box, but you can also see those number one guys that you talk about. They make adjustments, in-game adjustments, and they are quick adjustments. You can see Justin Verlander as well reaching back on that fastball and start getting amping up a little bit. Smith laying off that one and it's two and two.
Twelve thirty is our TV time tomorrow here on Fox Sports San Diego. Prior to the final game of this series, three and two now to Seth. Good eye on that curveball, just spitting on it. And a chance after Verlander tonight for the Padres to attack the American League Cy Young winner of the year ago, Max Scherzer. You know, you might see a change up here. Three and two, two outs. Verlander's already thrown Seth Smith some change ups tonight. Fastball. Back through the middle. There's your favorite play. The ground ball to the center fielder. <laughs> Seth Smith keeps this fifth inning alive and brings the tying run to the plate. He stayed on that fastball nicely. He wanted it down and away. And once again, Mark Sweeney. Well, what's impressive about Seth Smith is just staying on that fastball. That's a pitcher's pitch. Using the middle of the field, but also staying on that changeup if he does throw it and possibly hooking out down the right field line. But professional hitting by Seth Smith. Jed Jerko knocked in a run with a sacrifice fly in the first, fly to right the last time. Now, Jed, last year as a rookie, 23 home runs, but did not homer in the month of April. He's been shut out so far. He's due to flat one in the seats. He drives that one to center field for a base hit. Seth Smith will hold at second base. The ball gets away from center fielder Jackson. So Smith will take third on the air. Well, first and third with two outs here in the fifth. Smith had put on the brakes because Jackson charged the ball, but then Austin, uh, in his haste to come up with it and throw, let it get away for an extra base. Another broken bat off the end of the bat. I get choked up just talking about it. <laughs> off the end of the bat, broken bat, the seventh miscue this year for the Tigers. You know, we talk about certain teams and their strengths and weaknesses. Talked to some of the Tiger people yesterday. The defense was one issue, and then also the bullpen, which we've documented already. So here's Chase Headley. He's two for two tonight. He had two big hits last night, a double and a two run home run. Single and a double this evening. As that talented bat of his has come to life for the Padres. Chance to do some damage here. Two on at the corners, two out, trailing by two. One and one. Last couple pitches have been up to Chase Headley. That breaking ball missing. A two out singles by Smith and Jerko. Air in center field, so first and third. See, this is where Verlander can turn it up a notch. Whether it's with the fastball or make some good quality pitches when he's behind in the count or even in the count, like now one and one. Good curveball. One and two now to Headley. Eightieth pitch of the night coming up from the Detroit right handed. Ooh, almost threw that away. That would have been a run. Off speed again. Got to be so tempting for the oh, hitter. Yeah. Well, you see the workload in the first inning 31 pitches. Now, here in the fifth, be the 21st toss for Verlander. Curveball. Roll foul. Out in front of it just a little bit. There's the curveball we're talking about, and Chase Headley just gets enough of it. Top half foul ball. Fastball in. Strike came out. High fastball out of the strike zone. 
Padres get a couple of singles, but nothing on the board. So after five, Detroit four to two. Ball by Saquon Casino. Real friendly and real close. By the Jack in the Box. Try the new bacon insider. It's got bacon mixed right into the patty. Mm -mm. And by a Rumco Group. Purchase, refinance, reverse. With Chris Button, Mark Grant, this is Dick Enberg at Petco Park. We've completed five innings. The uh, Tigers. Leading 4 2, Kennedy goes to work. Ooh, what a cut by Alex Gonzalez, who has popped up and flied out. Kennedy and Verlander, after five innings, each with 82 pitches. Tigers out hitting the Padres 8 to 7. That's in there. Uh oh, look who's on deck. Look who's lurking. One ball, two strikes. Alex Gonzalez. Foul territory. Grandol might have a play. No, nope. running out of room. Ball well, lands in the dugout. Always have to be careful going around those stairs. And of course, he'll get a little help from his friends. Bud Black was on it. I'm sure some of his teammates were on it. Saying no, 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 no. Jose Iglesias, the Tigers acquired from Boston last year, was he injured, I believe, in spring training. And so that forced the Tigers to go out in the open market and they. Signed Alex Gonzalez. Up high. Oh, I remember Two watching him make some unbelievable plays last year. You know, guys, talking about Jose Iglesias, I thought it was a perfect idea to have Omar Vizquel, the first base coach for Detroit, to have him on the staff to work with him every day. Swing and a miss by Gonzalez. He chased seven strikeouts for Kennedy. Yeah, that's a good point, Mark. Anytime you can acquire the services of Omar Vizquel, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best shortstops as he patrols first base coach's box. Man, uh, in his, you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb. And, and Mark Sweeney, I'd like your That's opinion. where the best fruit is out there on the limb, you know? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I, I was fortunate enough to look over my right shoulder in Seattle and see Omar playing shortstop. And, and at his prime, the best defensive shortstop I think ever. Well, I think the only argument is probably Ozzie Smith. I had the fortune to be in both of those uniforms, both with Omar Vizquel and also Ozzie Smith, but both of them in their prime, outstanding, oh. and you can't go wrong with either choice. Verlander, two for two after going through a, an entire major league career without a base hit. 
singled on the ground to center and singled through the right side. He's feeling pretty spunky up there. Yeah, now he's pulling the string on him. First is right through the wickets and into center field and <laughs> all the dug out of the Tigers saved that ball and then he slaps this one hard through the right side and now he punches one to the second baseman Jerko and he'll carry the bat halfway to first base. Breaking up a rally. So two outs to Raj Davis who is two for three tonight. Yeah, the damage done by the Tigers comes starting with Verland and then go to the top of the order. Davis with two hits, Kinsler yep. with two doubles, Hunter with a two run single, and Cabrera with an RBA double. And Verlander shakes his head. Hey, I can't go hitting a thousand. No, I gotta make it out now and then. Well, he's worrying about throwing up zeros. He's gonna leave the rest of the work to Rajay Davis here. He's hit some balls right on the nose tonight. Both singles to right field. Hey, a good sign for Ian Kennedy because the third time around, Rajay Davis, after that single score to run, he's given up the single. Ian Kennedy made short, some good pitches. Good short hop by Headley. A 1 2 3 inning. And Ian Kennedy has retired the last seven Tigers in a row. Padres come up, they need two. In the lead, 4 2, and he's contributed with the bat and the arm just as Kashner did last night. And if you go back the last six seasons, Verlander tied for first and wins. Best strikeout pitcher in the majors. 109 pitches a game. He's a workhorse. That's first. Second most innings, third most starts. And he's just 31. Yeah, and the, the, the main word that sticks out is consistency since he's been at the big league level just. Every fifth day, it's it, as far as the Tigers are concerned, it's wind day when he is on the mound. And not that the guy can walk on water because he is beatable, and the Padres are doing their best to try to even up the Tigers when as they lead four to two. And, and Mark Sweeney, I wanted to mention the the one thing about Justin Verlander is that it seems like every single pitch delivery, he is so consistent with his delivery, repeating it. Pitch after pitch. That's why he's so successful. Yeah, so impressive. And there, and you marvel at the elite players in the game of baseball. This is the stopper that you talk about. If they go through a phase where they're losing games, they believe, like you said, Mark, they're going to win when Justin Verlander is on the mound. That's what impresses you and why you marvel about his ability. Alonzo behind the count now, two strikes. Yonder is grounded out in flight out tonight. 
every single pitch the same. The only difference is the grip. And what that grip does that looks like a change up grip there. Kind of opens up boy that's really you see that front foot really yeah. opening up towards the front of the first base side. You know, usually you're taught to keep that front side closed and that toe is going to. Even be closed up a little bit especially with a power pitcher. You talk about how he changes speeds how about that he just reared back and fired a 94 mile an hour fastball. One and two to Alonso. Out of the way. Alonso Grandal and Venable. Three left handed bats against. Verlander and then the pitcher spot is due. Fourth. And the Padre pen is busy. Nick Vincent getting ready. Ground ball, but it's aimed right at the shortstop. Gonzalez, one away. Yasmani Grandal locked in a run last time up. Well, Mark Sweeney, after that ground out six to three, they pitched him perfectly, played him defensively perfectly. Uh, something in the swing of Alonso mechanically, maybe the hips? Yeah, when you see Yonder Alonso, and some of the things to watch for is that front hip slides before his hands start working. If he gets his hips underneath him, you can see the hands working and they work a lot quicker and some of the adjustments it's a fine tune adjustment that yonder's going to have to make and you can see the numbers aren't where he wants to be but those are the adjustments consistently that he's going to have to make as his career goes on so what you're saying is when his hips drift like they're his hips drift towards the pitcher yeah and they throw they're drifting before his hands start working i got he, you. he has to stay underneath them and phil plantier talked about this during spring training and I think it's just a work in progress and sometimes the speed of a pitcher and in, in the fastball velocity will tend to have you kick you into that point. A just, hit on the count two strikes to ground all. It's just amazing the little things. Whether it's. A hit into left field a base hit that's up the alley cutting it off as Jackson ground all takes the big turn it's a long single he's two for three. Well, in contrast to Alonso, how about Grandol, Mark? Well, he continues to impress early in the season. It's not the power numbers, but it's the consistency, getting the barrel on top of the baseball. You can see him working with his lower half, which is a good sign, especially with the knee problems. But controlling the barrel of the bat and driving those gaps, you have to do that, and then the power will come. He did a good job of staying on top of that baseball rather than working under it because that pitch was elevated. It was almost a one handed swing. Yeah, taking it the opposite way. Here's Venable. Venable looking for his first long ball. Tried to bunt his way and grounded out to second. 0 for 2 for Will. Nick Hundley has a bat. The pitcher spot due next. Ooh. Make sure he steps now. Got a pivot in front of the rubber there. He's very quick with his feet. It's a rookie picked off seven runners. It's always been tough. And he ties up Venable inside with that 94 mile an hour fastball. That's almost like a quick pitch, Mark Sweeney. Did you see that? Yeah, that's what he did. He Very quickened quick. up his, his motion, and that messes up the hitter. And you saw Will Venable get out of the strike zone there. As I mentioned earlier, he'll throw over to first base quite a bit. Came out. Three pitches. 95 on the fastball as well. That's five strikeouts on the evening for Verlander. Two away. And here comes Hundley to pinch hit. Up the ladder with movement to Will Venable. Avila sets up in it, but you know, even though even though he misses, he gets away with that one because it's 95. That's about his fastest delivery since in the second inning. We saved some in the tank. Hundley, only nine at bats, but four hits, a couple of doubles. After a solid spring. It's 
Uh, going first pitch slider looked like either that was a tighter curveball or a slider. First pitch for a strike. Shorter breaker. Hmm. That's a curveball there. Wow. Fantastic break. Ian Kennedy there is day. And night finished. Best pitching came in the fourth, fifth, and sixth inning. After the Tigers had scored their two runs in the fourth, got the final out, and then retired the side in order in the fifth and the sixth. The trails in the game, 4 2 to this man. How about that against the National League? Verlander has just owned the Nationals 21 and 2. 209 batting average by those on the Padres side of the fence in the National League. Another curveball. Strike three called. He just froze Hundley with that snapper. Whew. Six strikeouts for Verlander. The Padres gone in the sixth. Tigers enjoy a 4 2 lead. And welcome back to Petco Park on baseball night in San Diego this Saturday. Big crowd at Petco. We go to the seventh inning, the Tigers leading the Padres 4 2. This is Nick Vincent. Vincent hasn't pitched since Wednesday in Cleveland when he worked an inning in the third, retired all four batters. And it's time for Nick Vincent. I mean, th this is crunch time. He's got to hold these Tigers as we go into the later third of this ball game, going over signs with Yasmani Grandal. Hold the Tigers to four. And you figure that uh, Verlander may have one more inning. He'll be over the 100 pitch mark, mm -hmm. and uh, the Padres will eventually get into that Detroit bullpen, which has been vulnerable to allowing runs. 5.64, the team bullpen ERA for the Tigers. You compare that to the Padres, 2.89. Kinsler, a couple of doubles, and a ground out to second. Verlander doesn't have the jacket on, so you have to assume he's got more in him. Goes back into the clubhouse, perhaps, to, to stay warm. Ground ball aimed at Everett Cabrera. Skip and a flip. One away. 
Oh, well, good start for Nick and great location on that little cutter or slider that he throws on the outside part of the plate for the ground ball. He's not scared to pump that strike zone. Now he faces the serious big guns. Torrey Hunter, a two run single, the difference in the game now. Back in the fourth inning, and Miguel Cabrera on deck. He has an RBI double. There's a strike. Yeah, we had a wonderful morning, uh, Mark Grant. We went out to uh, the Point Loma area, Liberty Station. Oh, yes, yeah. you had that event this morning. The step by step uh, fight against Parkinson's disease. How'd that go? There were about 4,000 people. Some nice. ran, some walked, some just strolled. And, you know, people who have the disease, right. they, some brought their dogs. And the beautiful thing they raised uh, from last year, $250,000 they gave to the Scripps Clinic where they're doing some incredible work of Alzheimer's, but mostly Parkinson. They just take a little piece of skin and do temp, uh, stem cell research. Right. It's just amazing things that are being done. And That's great. There was a huge turnout. Cure, yeah. It was nice of you to take part. Well, you know, you, you emceed it, right? Yeah, and it, it really was not a role. It was just a matter I was there and I introduced a few people. But, you know, when you do those things and you do so many of them, you get so much more out of it Absolutely. than you give. No yeah. question. You meet so many beautiful yep. people. That's the one thing I'm most grateful for being here in San Diego is, you, you know, making uh, and establishing new friendships along the way. You go to an event like that. Two strikes now. The count on Torrey Hunter. What a good slider down and away here. He just didn't find the strike zone. Well, he does a good job of expanding the strike zone. That's by design there. You know, you'd, you'd rather miss that far off the plate than catch too much of the plate, especially being ahead 0-2. The pride and joy of Ramona. Nick Vincent. Yeah, he doesn't call the tow trucks. High fly ball. Oh, did Hunter just miss that one? Way up into the night. Smith for the second out. Well, you can join the Padres tomorrow. Well, yeah. As always on Sunday, they honor the men and women who serve the U.S. Armed Forces with Military Opening Day presented by Northrop Grumman. Enjoy a special pregame ceremony before the Padres take the field against the Tigers at 110. Get your tickets tonight at Padres.com or call 619-795-5555. You've done the Midway Tour, haven't you? I have. Isn't that something? It's amazing. Over a million tourists a year. Really? They visit the Midway. Cabrera slams that one foul. Cabrera, after a long out to right center, doubled into the corner in the third inning to drive in a run. Fly to right the last time. I think that last foul ball went into the Padre dugout. Heads up. Imposing figure in that batter's box. Now, this is a huge inning for Nick Vincent. Nicely done. Low cutter. Slider away to Cabrera. The beauty of the big effort by Andrew Kastner last night. The bullpen getting the night off after a day off. So everyone's fresh. Just keep it out there, Nick. Down and away. Or, oh, look, he's going to go up by design. Oops. Did you Got see in. that? Got see? inside, yeah. Yeah, you see Yasmani almost out of the crowd. It's giving the high target. He's out of the crowd. That's like old school Mickey Cochran back in the 30s. Oh, I love Mickey Cochran. One of the great Hall of Fame Tigers. Number retired. <laughs> Iron Mike. Another foul. Yeah, I grew up as you know, the grandfather that went to every opening game the Tigers played for some 35 years. My father loved baseball, my mother as well. And those are the names. We talked about Tommy Bridges and Mickey Cochran and Charlie Geringer and mm -hmm. Hank Greenberg. Did get a chance to see Greenberg play as a kid. 
Two strikes on Cabrera. Fastball up. Even, even his foul balls have muscle. That's all the way to the aisle way in the upper tier. Ah, that's a good sign for the Padres. The Tiger bullpen is busy. Ian Kroll. He's the lefty. Java Chamberlain. Former Yankee. So perhaps Orlando's evening is finished. Another foul. Now if the Padres can't keep it here, four to two, and they get in that bullpen, hey, right? Got a chance. You, know, you like their chances? They're in striking distance. That's why this is such an important at bat here for Nick Vincent to get Cabrera and have a one-two-three inning here in the seventh. His 14th pitch of the inning coming up. Keeping it away and up. And another foul. The man's a menace. Just goes to show you, though, the back control, the hand eye coordination that Cabrera possesses, taking those pitches and just getting a piece of it to stay alive. The last four years, this man in the batter's box has averaged, now, folks, averaged 34 homers, 127 runs batted in. He's hit 328, 344, 330, and 348 the last four years. Yeah, he can follow him off too. Can you get him out? Nice. Yes, he strikes him out. A one, two, three inning for Nick Benson. This big crowd at Petco is going to stand and stretch and celebrate the traditional seventh inning stretch. With the Tigers leading the Padres four to two. Tigers manager Brad Ausmus during his last three seasons here in San Diego says he used to have long talks with Buddy Black. And so I asked Bud, what's your best advice that you gave him? He said, in all seriousness, you need to keep Miguel Cabrera, Justin Verlander, Ian Kinsler, Tori Hunter. He said, in all seriousness, though, I just enjoyed the talks that we had together. He said, uh, you know, I could tell three years ago when he first came here, this guy was destined to be a major league manager. Yeah, you're right. Out of Dartmouth, such a cerebral man. 18 years in the big leagues behind the plate. Those catchers are the only ones who are looking in one direction when the other eight players are looking in the other. They see the whole game. Yep. Here's Justin Verlander coming back for the bottom of the seventh inning. Everett Cabrera leads it off. He has a double and a couple of ground outs. Well, now the fourth time around for these Padre hitters, hoping to get multiple base runners and come up with that big hit to at least try to tie it here in the home half of the seventh. It's the high strike. His 99th pitch of the evening, Justin Verlander. See, he'll just toy with you. That was a 90 mile an hour fastball just to get over fastball, 
Now he'll throw the curveball, the change up. Knowing that he's got that 95 mile exactly. an hour in his back pocket. Oh. Here's the curveball. This is inside. 100 pitches. Two to one ratio, basically. Balls to strikes. And Cabrera's been the ignition switch. He's the energizer. And he got a good pitch there. Called it down deep in the left field corner. Don't forget tonight, uh, after the game, stay tuned for Fox Sports San Diego post game show with Mike and Mark, and then afterwards, an hour documentary on Spotlight the whole story, the history of Petco Park. Set your VCRs up high. Yeah, I, I do. Yes, good. <laughs> you got those VHS tapes stacked oh, yeah. up all in your armoire oh, there, oh, but you wouldn't believe yeah. it's a library. They're going to be worth something someday. You know, as I look at the defense, Dick, with the way the Tiger outfielders are playing, Austin Jackson way over. Look at where he is right there. Everett Cabrera get a breaking ball and pull it. Ooh, stays alive. Went after a pitch of very high, 93 miles an hour. But with two strikes, he has learned a very valuable lesson for a man that can use his speed, not try to hit home runs. He goes up on the handle, choke up more control. Oh, he was fooled in a late wave as that big curveball strikes out another seven strikeouts for Verlander. Well, let's go back to uh, your keys to the game, Mark Grant, brought to you by your Honda dealers of San Diego County. Well, get a lead. That was one of the first keys here. Have not had a lead. Tied 1-1 after the first inning. Get to the pen early. Well, Verlander's going deep into the game. Now pitch six in a third, and he leads by two. Got to get that tying run to the plate. Or multiple base runners and the go ahead run here in the seventh. Denortia singled and scored in the first, stealing second and third and riding home on Jerko's sacrifice fly. He struck out both times since. Good eye, 2 and 0. Bullpen for Detroit continues to be busy, both the right and the lefty. Deep drive to center, but that's a big part of the yard, and Jackson runs it down. Well struck, but he couldn't find the gap. Two away to Seth Smith. You know, I remember reading about in the offseason, there was some concern with Justin Verlander as Denorfia puts a charge into this one. You can see where he starts and then heading back. This is where speed comes into play. Pull the parachute and make it look easy for Jackson out in center field. Yeah, that's that tough read, the line drive right at you. Smith has walked, flight out, and single. Remember this offseason, Verlander had that sports hernia surgery in January. And they were like, oh no, our ace, you know, having surgery is going to be ready. He didn't skip a beat. He was ready for spring training, worked really, really hard, recovered in time, and Wants to leave off where he did from last year, which was a down year according to Justin Verlander. Late strike call against Seth Smith. Now last year, Verlander won only 13 hits. Yeah. But he's had a 24 and 5 season, a 19 and 9. Seth Smith goes down swinging. Verlander better as the game has progressed. He now has eight strikeouts.
Mark Sweeney and Mike Pomeranz working on Padres Live, the post-game show, brought to you by Cox Communications. But before we get to what we have in store for you after the game, in game, boy, Justin Verlander has been tough. Yeah, dominant stuff from the ace of the Detroit Tigers. And you saw him pitching off the fastball, but also had secondary pitches to go along with it. The nasty changeup right there, but also the breaking ball, making it uncomfortable for the Padres. But the Padres have an opportunity to come back and win this off of Joe Nathan, especially their closer. Their bullpen struggles, Mike. Yeah, they've got two more whacks at the Tigers, and the numbers really do give the Padres a chance. They have had difficulty, the bullpen has, and it's really been a matter of those guys just getting the key outs. They've got the names for it, but if you check out that ERA at a 5.64 behind only the Sox, Astros, Cardinals, and Royals, they're in some trouble after the starting rotation. Hopefully they'll get to either Java Chamberlain or Joe Nathan and see if we can't make a difference. When we see in a postgame show, we'll have all the highlights from today's action, including what Justin has done and Ian Kennedy. Also, we're going to give you the inside scoop, some inside knowledge on how to beat Max Scherzer tomorrow and you'll hear from the manager buddy black so we'll see you guys after the final out i hope you can brew that formula mike and mark there's verlander he don't he might want to stay in the game and get a chance to swing the bat again is two for three is an instrumental and certainly in one of the runs here's alex torres as we go to the top of the eighth and another big crowd at petco forty two thousand one hundred eighty two here tonight Our first baseball night in San Diego, a big success. Now the Potter's got to come up with some runs. A long drive, left center field. Smith makes the catch. The old Miss quarterback on a fly pattern there, racing into the gap to make that sliding catch. Well I, done. I got to be honest with you. Off the bat, I thought it was going to split the gap, but Seth Smith gets on it and. Grabs it for the out, and then right after that, gets the ball to the infield and reaches for the bag of seeds to reward himself. And Alex Torres likes that one. Have some seeds, Seth. Well, a nice place made by the Padre defense. Alonzo back in the fifth inning with that running catch in foul territory. That's a big league play right there. Now Smith delivering. Here's Castellanos, the rookie third baseman. He is grounded out. That was a. Uh, the bobble by Headley safe on the air, fly to center, and struck it. You know, getting back to Justin Verlander, we talked about his repertoire and what he possesses. I, I would be betting the dime to donuts. His fastball to breaking ball ratio change up uh, 35 to 40 percent fastballs. He threw a lot of off speed pitches tonight. Seems mighty happy with this effort. He should be. It's about what we expected yeah. coming to the yard tonight, isn't and, it? And that's there's a line drive into left, a base hit. It's going to rattle again in that left field corner. And Smith plays it carefully because there's some tricky caroms out there. And Castellanos, here's another double. His first hit tonight. He's got a nice looking swing as Mark Sweeney was talking earlier in the ball game. Boy, getting his hands in, getting his hands in nicely. Keeping that ball fair. And he's had to make the adjustment, not only, you know, hitting, but position wise as well. Third base to shortstop, the outfield back to third base. Three of the nine hits for the Tigers tonight, two base hits. Kinsler an RBI double, Cabrera an RBI double, and now the one out two base hit from Castellanos brings up Avila. Struck out all three times. And Kinsler with two doubles actually. For four for the Tigers. The Padres have a pair of doubles. Cabrera and Headley. Nice change up. 0 oh and 2. Torres fastball change up heavy. Occasionally just occasionally he'll throw the breaking ball. He's got a doozy of a change up. A power arm for a man that's not that big.
Throw back to second base. But into the runner and call is safe as Cabrera made a great stop. That ball came to him on a short hop from Grandall. Hey, why not challenge that, right? But Black's going to go out and talk to second base umpire Mike Winters, the crew chief. Boy, he had him lead it. Oh, that's challenge worthy. Here's a better angle. Oh, he's out. He out by plenty. He's out. He is out. Well, this is going to be reviewed, and uh, it's pretty obvious that when the decision comes back from New York, New York, Castellanos is going to be jogging to the dugout as the second out of the inning. Most common plays on the reviewable playlist: tag plays. And once again, there's three outcomes confirmed, stands, or overturned. This should not take long. No, not at all. It was a, a nice reception and tag by Cabrera to make the play work. You're out of there. Nice. You know, credit Everett Cabrera for the pick and the tag on the right hip before Castellanos gets back to the bag. Very nice. So two outs. They erase Castellanos after his double, and here's Avila with a count one ball, two strikes. Ground ball up the middle, so the play by Grandal to pick off Castellanos pays off. That would have Given the Tigers a run. Avila's first hit of the series. And that'll bring up Alex Gonzalez. That was kind of nice the way that, that all yes. worked out, huh? And it worked smoothly and quickly. Yeah, you're talking about making an adjustment. Alex Avila. Strikeout, strikeout, strikeout. And now the single up the middle. Two outs. Torres needs to make a good pitch here to get the Padres back in the dugout. He had struck out five straight times in the series until that base hit. Heavy ball Torres throws 93 on that fastball. Verlander, he may still want to come back out. There he is, short sleeve. You know, he's been betrayed by the bullpen in his first two starts. He comes in 0 and 1, despite the fact he's pitched well enough to win both those games, but they got away after he left the contest. Wing in the midst. Two and one for Gonzalez. Victor Martinez, who hit cleanup last night. Is in the on deck circle. Ground ball to Headley. He gets the force in second. Torres is out of the inning thanks to a great pickoff. Combination of Grandall and Cabrera to keep the score within two. Padres will send up Churco, Headley, and Alonso in the bottom of the eighth. We'll see who's on the mound for Detroit.
We move to the bottom of the eighth inning. It will be a new Detroit pitcher as Ian Kroll comes in. Padres have played some solid defense tonight. DeAndre Alonso making a very tough play on this foul ball. Let's check in with the Fox Vision. Yonder Alonzo's got a beat on it. He goes 74.9, almost 75 feet. Flash look, stretch. I don't know about the landing. You know, the tuck and roll, not bad. The main thing is he didn't get hurt. It's, you know, it's a good thing he caught it for the out. It's a 25-yard run. That's absolutely that right. Give him a first down. <laughs> that was a big play. This is Ian Kroll, the left-hander, making his fourth appearance. He's allowed only one base hit thus far. He's been one member of that bullpen that has been effective in limited duty. Well, the Tigers, three lefties, Kroll, Koch, and Smiley. Smiley, though, is their fifth starter. Up and in on that first fastball at 92 to Jerko. Kroll can get that fastball to 95, 96. Occasionally he'll cut it. Throws a curveball and a changeup. There's a strike at 92 again from Naperville, Illinois. He was acquired by the Tigers from the Nationals this uh, year, early year before the season. Trade that sent Doug Fister to Washington. One and two. Al Albuquerque. I love that name. Is Des Des Moines out there? Too? <laughs> yeah. Phil Phoenix. Tim Stauffer. Joaquin Benoit getting ready for the Padres. Way inside. A little more on that fastball. Two and two. Jerko trying to get something started against the Tiger bullpen here in the bottom of the eighth. Verlander went seven innings, two runs, earned, eight hits, one walk, eight strikeouts. Hey, a bloop and a blast. That's what the Padres need here. Sails into the upper tier. We have 42,182 here tonight. Look forward to seeing you out here tomorrow, 12.30 our TV time. Fox Sports San Diego and then one o'clock for the game military opening day. And a count full now. Max Scherzer the Cy Young winner American League last year. And Tyson Ross trying to right his ship. And beat uh, the best in the American League a season ago. Three and two. Struck him out. One Padre season tickets plus 12 months of outstanding member benefits. New Padre season ticket memberships are now available with big savings on 21 half or full season plans plus exclusive on field access in events and great discounts at San Diego's best restaurants. Get online at Padres.com slash membership or get on the horn dial 619-795-5555 and become a member today. Well lots of benefits. Check out. Just how you can become one. Chase Headley bats right handed for the first time as a lefty. Broken bat single, infield hit, and a double and scored in the fourth inning. Two for three. Struck out the last time. And he hits this one well to left field. That's Davis to the line and makes the catch. So two away is. We look forward to the final game of this three game series and a chance to see Max Scherzer against the Padres, Tyson Ross. Ross get that wicked slider going against this Detroit lineup. Scuffling a bit the last two times. But many feel he's got as good a stuff as Scherzer. It's a matter of command. Tyson Ross trying to get that first victory. He's doing some scouting. He's had two games to watch in the video room and now in uh, person from the dugout. We're locking horns tomorrow. Two outs to Alonzo. On the knees, on the corner. Tough pitch. Yonder 0 for 3. Round out twice and a fly ball to left. 
Lines that one. Fair ball just inside the line. Alonzo on his way to second. Another double. The seventh double of the evening. Three by the Padres. So well, that'll bring the time run to the plate. Well, it's a good sign. Lefty on lefty. Ian Kroll against Yonder Alonzo. And it looks like he hung a breaking ball there to him. See how far out Freddie catches it. Speeds up the bat of Yonder Alonzo. And thank goodness it stays fair. There's your blue, folks. Padres need a blast. I don't think Alonzo would call that a bloop, but it's, it stays in the rhythm of the message. And here's Grandall. He's two for three. How about a little two out thunder here for San Diego? Yeah, the Miami connection. There you go. Pitching coach Jeff Jones on the horn. Grandall knocked in a run with a single in the fourth, single this last time. Now bats right handed. Tommy Medica has gloves on. He's got his shillelagh ready to go if needed. Everybody's got a close eye on Ian Crow, the lefty. Randall is actually a natural right handed hitter. And Jeff Jones, we saw the pitch coach on the phone. Making sure if Al Albuquerque was ready, possibly in that Tiger bullpen. That's a long distance call to New Mexico, <laughs> huh? <laughs> you can win a spelling bee if you can spell that capital city. Two and one. Oh, no, he caught the corner again. In scoring position, a good average, 316 for Grandol. The only difference, Albuquerque out in the pen, the first R is not in the city's name. It's A L B U Q U E R Q U E. He's got an extra R. A L B U R. Can you use it in a sentence? Sure you can. Two and two. Oof. Stays alive. That's a dangerous pitch. Lefty on righty. The breaky ball that's coming into the righty. Almost like uh, you know Yonder Alonso if facing a right-handed pitcher coming down and speeding up the bat. Something you could yank out of the yard. Struck him out. A couple of strikeouts for Kroll. Padres leave another man in scoring position. We go to the ninth, four to two.
Braves baseball by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. By Petco, where the healthy pets go. And by your San Diego Lexus dealer. Top of the ninth inning, Tim Stauffer comes in to pitch, and he'll first face Victor Martinez betting for the pitcher, Ian Kroll. Well, usually in a game like this, you'll either see uh, Houston Street or somebody going there if they need some work, if they need some work. Maybe Dale Thayer, but Tim Stauffer getting inning of work here. And while we've got some time, oh, what, what now? This copyrighted telecast oh is presented my. by authority of the San Diego Padres and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. As always, well done. Thank you, sir. Wally Joyner, the hitting coach, going over the numbers. Looks like he's got an iPad working there on the uh, in the dugout, whether it's numbers or checking out video. Boy, how times have changed. He's playing words with friends. Looks like uh, he's going over the hitters uh, that uh, may have to face offer. First, it's Martinez, switch hitter, played last night. Hit cleanup at first base. Went over two. We walked. One of the few base runners allowed by Andrew Kashner. He allowed three in the game. A walk, an error, and that flare single off the bat of Rajay Davis. Well, there's the closer, uh, Joe Nathan. Been struggling lately. Two and one to Martinez. Victor hitting an even 300, nine for 30. A couple of home runs. Good change up from Tim. Once again, throw up a zero. Left field, there goes Smith into the gap, and he's got another. Well done by Seth Smith. Off with a crack of the bat and able to take that potential extra base hit off Victor Martinez. Well, you know, Saturday night is baseball night in San Diego, as yes. promised, and you're always going to get something from the Padres, right? And the Padres are going to be home next Saturday night. Yes, sir. Against the Giants. What yep. do you think we're going to get? Um, something nice. Something to do about Jed Jerko? Yep. Uh, Jed Jerko alternate jersey and pet bandana presented by Petco. A and pet, a pet bandana. So two. two for one? Two. Plus the baseball, it's three for one. That's three for one. So Saturday night indeed, baseball night in San Diego. So Gotta make your it. plans. Get your tickets at Padres.com or you know the number 619 795 5555. Unbelievable. First pitch, you get squeezed. Second pitch, right there where the first one was. And the count is even at one and one. Hey, strikes are hard enough to get called, you know, as it is. Don't make it any hard, any tougher for the guy. This is a tough hitter, Rajay Davis. He's got a couple of hits, two singles. He scored two runs, two for four night. You know, I might, I might be complaining, but I don't care. I got to stick up for the pitchers. You do. Yeah. I think we admire that. Three and one. Not familiar with Seth Buckmeister is uh, don't know much about him. Rookie umpire. Many new first year bumps in the game this season. Three and one. And a walk to a very dangerous man, Davis, who has five steals already this season. It's almost a sure thing that he's going to try to pill for second here in the ninth inning. As Ian Kinsler comes up, RBI double in the first, 
Doubled again in the third and scored. Half starting pitcher Ian Kennedy grounded out the last two times. Yeah, hit it with good bat control. You got the speed on first base. Let's see if Tim Stoffer kind of holds a little bit and then throws over to first base. Davis had a couple of steals last night. See if Tim also uses a slide step here. Or is conventional uh, another move? Davis doesn't take a commanding lead to now the third stride. Strike squaring was Kinsler. Third base coach Dave Clark throwing out a series of signs. Kinsler back in the box. I don't think the third base coach is giving a steal sign. The only sign he would give is don't steal. Right. Davis is on his own. That one outside, one and one. The difference in the game a two run single by Torrey Hunter back in the fourth inning, and that inning was started by Justin Erlander's single. So his bat played a part in tonight's game at this point. Two, four, three for Verlander. His first hits as a major leaguer, his first run scored as a big leaguer. Bigger lead this yeah. time for Davis. Doesn't go and the ball gets away, but no advance. Miguel Cabrera and Wally Joyner got that iPad and grab some video on there. You know, huh? what a great idea, right? Have it right there firsthand in the dugout. Not been a pitcher's umpire, but Black barking out at him. See where Rick Renteria got the toss in yeah, Chicago, the first that. manager to be thrown out of a game. Renteria, the lovable former coach with the Padres, now the skipper of the Cubs. There he goes, and then he stops and comes back on ball four. Even Kinsler hesitated as if he thought it was a strike. So back to back walks Davis and Kinsler from Stauffer. Not a good thing. Now you got to face Hunter and maybe Cabrera again. Hunter struck out, line to right. The big hit, a two run single to center in the fourth. And a long out to left the last time. That was the play. That wasn't the great play by Smith, the skidding play. That the Smith's uh, defensive play came against Jackson. Seems like Cabrera is in the on, sec on deck circle every inning. Chop to third, very tough play. And he gets it. Hunter doesn't run like he used to. Two away, and the runners move up. Davis to third, and Kinsler to second. Well, that play there from up here almost looked like it was slow motion. And that's a play that Chase Headley makes so well. He's got so good at that play. You know, the big key is not only getting to the baseball. But throwing it accurately because you kind of got to throw that a little bit behind you because your momentum is taking you towards home plate. But he gets it on the fair side of a first base. You're going to walk Cabrera intentionally, so the base is loaded on walks. Tiger fans uh, wanted to see Cabrera swing the bat. Can't blame him. 
But the odds are you, even the Austin Jackson, sure. as far as the better average, you'd rather take your chances with Jackson than Cabrera. Could be forced at any base. So walks to Davis, Kinsler, and now Cabrera to load him up. Just an opportunity to look ahead the bottom of the, of the ninth inning for the Padres. It'll be Venable, the pitcher spot, and Cabrera. Stoffer's got to hold him right here. Dangerous territory with the bases full, and Austin Jackson fly to right, walked, and then he's been denied. By the two best defensive plays of the game, the foul ball and down the right field line where Alonzo ran 25 yards to make an over the shoulder catch, stumbling on the dirt, and then the diving, skidding catch by Seth Smith to deny him extra bases in left field in the eighth inning. Three outside. Thus far this year, with runners in scoring position, Austin Jackson is 0 for 8. Line drive, left center field. There goes Smith again. He can't catch this one. It bounces over the fence. That saves a run, but two will score on the ground rule double. So the three walks and Jackson takes advantage. Another double in this game and that gives the Tigers a 6-2 lead. Davis scores from third. Kinsler scores for the second time. Davis has uh, hit the plate three times tonight. Well, as we take a look at the location of Jackson, that ball outer third and Jackson does a good job of really getting extended. Knob towards the ball, barrel to follow, and you can tell on contact right on the sweet spot. Seth Smith has done a fine job out in left field tonight, but no chance getting this one. Off the warning track over the wall, and that one hurts. Jackson with his third and fourth RBIs of the season. Well, you set the table with three walks to this Tiger lineup. You're begging for trouble. Well, you were hoping because you know Joe Nathan warming up in the bullpen for the Tigers. He has struggled, scuffled a little bit lately. Castellanos caught by Headley just off the dirt, just in case he makes the tag. The inning comes to an end. Two runs on only one hit. Oh, those bases on ball. Justin Verlander went seven innings tonight. He allowed a couple of runs, but on the way he walked only one and struck out eight, and then contributed with a bat with a couple of base hits. One to spark a rally to give the Tigers a 4-2 lead. Cabrera knocking in one of the Tiger runs tonight with this double. Two-run single for Torrey Hunter and a two-run double for 
Austin Jackson doing the damage. That's Yasmani Grandal delivering one of the two runs for the Padres. The first came in the first inning when Denorfia walked, stole two bases, and scored on Drico sacrifice fly. Fourth inning, a double for Headley and the RBI single Grandal. 6 2. Joe Nathan comes in to pitch the ninth inning for the Tigers. Well, last time out for Joe Nathan is to take a look at his numbers. In inning, gave up three hits, three runs. They were earned, a couple of walks. And the last five outings for Joe Nathan, a 12.27 ERA. Opponents hitting 353 off the veteran right hander. Joe's going to be 40 years old next November. He's had quite a career. It starts off Venable with a strike. Will is 0 for 7 in the series. Well, one thing about Joe Nathan this year, the velocity has been down on the fastball, a slider, and a curveball as well. Six times an All Star. Nathan, the Twins, Texas Rangers, prior to Detroit. For the last three outings, an inning, two thirds, an inning. 3 2 1 as far as the hits, earned runs, mm. as I mentioned. Wednesday against the Dodgers, three earned runs. Venable sharply hit, but right to Kinsler for the first down. Well, time now for the Carl Jr. star of the game, and the Tigers' Justin Verlander has his first win of the season, striking out eight, allowing a couple of runs and eight hits. And as the game wore on, he became a better and better pitcher. Justin Verlander, our Carl Jr. star of the game. Alexi Amarista will pinch hit for Tim Stauffer. Miguel Cabrera moves from first to third, and Victor Martinez stays in the game. He's at first base. One and one. Nineteen years ago, Nathan selected in the sixth round of the draft by the Giants. All that. San Francisco, three years, four years, and then in 2004, Minnesota. For seven seasons, the last two years in Texas. Had a good year at Texas. Mm -hmm. He was 6 2 with a 1 3 9 ERA yep. last year. 67 appearances, 43 saves. Free agent signee in December by the Tigers. Three years out from Tommy John surgery back in 2010 for Joe Nathan. Another ground ball to Kinsler. And there's two gone here in the night. So after the game, folks, stay tuned after the post game show. Uh, one hour documentary, Spotlight of Old Park for San Diego. Fantastic old footage. And how, out of an area that wasn't the most pleasant part of our great city, this beautiful ballpark erupted. Oh, the tire story, the impact, what it's meant to San Diego. It's given it a real heartbeat. The gas lamp district and all. So stay tuned. We'll follow the post game show with Mike and Mark. Cabrera has grounded out twice, struck out, and doubled tonight. Not raised dwindling hopes, especially after that two run double top of the ninth off the bat of Austin Jackson. 
Ground ball right side. Kinsler can't get this one. A two hit night for Cabrera. He now has 10 hits in the last five games. We've seen him go up the center of the diamond. We've seen him go the opposite way. This pitch from Joe Nathan down in throw the head hit sharply through the right side. And beat the defense with that safety to right field. That's one of the few balls that he has pulled yep. in the five game hitting yep. streak. So that Ian Kinsler playing him and shading him up just a little bit up the middle of the diamond. And the drama of this ninth inning stolen by the three walks in the double. Otherwise this would be Denarfi up there representing the tying run. Late on the swing 92 on the fastball. Yeah, usually Joe Nathan's going to get up there to the mid 90s maybe even higher as far as velocity on the fastball but it's been down recently. And when that happens, a pitcher really has to rely on good location. Defensive indifference. Cabrera jogs to second. And it's one and one to Denorfia. Seth Smith would be next. Down to their last strike. Single, a couple of strikeouts and a line out to center Denorfia. So the battle continues for Chris Denorfia. That's Don't. what you get. You stay to the final lot. That's you right. Get a souvenir. It. The Tigers win it six to two. Justin Verlander's first win of the season. And here we go, Mike and Mark. Got a good post game show coming up for you. Get you ready for tomorrow. We think we've got some inside information on how to beat Max Scherzer. And you're going to hear from the manager on tonight's game, Buddy Black.